What's cooking, everybody? I'm Dave Altizer here with Kino Tika. Today we're talking about the 10 reasons why you should consider getting a DJI Inspire 2. The first reason you should consider getting this drone that you may not have known is that this thing actually isn't as big as you really think it is. When you see it and you compare it to a Phantom or a Mavic, a Mavic in particular, you probably think, oh my gosh, this thing is massive. It does look pretty big here, but it is very light and it fits in a really nice small styrofoam case that DJI supplies with the drone. And it's actually not that bad to carry with you. In fact, I would even say that you could probably compare it to carrying around a Phantom. It's never going to be like a Mavic in terms of portability, but it's really not much worse than a Phantom. The second reason you should consider getting this drone is because it has great battery life has two batteries on it. When you put these two batteries on here, it gives you up to 25 minutes roughly. And because there's two of them, it actually acts as a fail safe. Sometimes people ask me, how do you know that the drone's not gonna fall out of the sky? Well, it has happened to me before, but having two batteries kind of helps a little bit with the peace of mind knowing that if one of these fails, the other one will still be able to power the unit and get it home safely. Also, in case you didn't know, these are the same batteries that are used on the DJI Ronin 2. So if you own that gimbal or you're considering having this drone and that gimbal, all you need to do is just buy a bunch of these batteries and you're set for both the Ronin 2 and the Inspire 2. The third thing to consider about the Inspire 2 is really about the Inspire line in general. These landing gears go up when you take off and that's really great because it gives the camera full 360 degrees of motion to play around and get shots. One of the best features in my opinion on the DJI app using this drone is the focus tracking and camera movement option. All you gotta do is just draw a box around your subject and the camera stays locked on that subject while your drone is moving around. All you have to do is just move forward and that camera just stays locked on your subject and will go full 360 degrees while you're flying. These types of moves are almost impossible to do on a Phantom because the gimbal is not separate from the drone. Same for the Mavic as well. So having the ability to move the camera in a full 360 degrees with the landing gear being completely out of the shot is really unique to the Inspire line and one of the best features about this system. The fourth reason you should consider an Inspire 2 is because you can put unbelievable cameras like the X5S and the newly released X7 Zenmuse. This camera, the X5S, has a micro four third sensor and the X7 has a super 35 sensor. Unbelievable, unheard of, nothing on the market is like it. The image quality off of this thing is insane. No matter which system you get, either the cheaper X5S or the X7, you're going to get much better image quality compared to even the Phantom 4 Pro. So in terms of image quality alone, either way, you're gonna get ridiculous image quality coming off of both of these sensors, especially on this X7. Having a Super 35 sensor is really amazing. The fifth reason you should consider an Inspire 2 is because it has a FPV camera installed on the front. This is a second camera, completely separate from your gimbal main fancy pants camera. And the reason that this is here is to give you a better perspective of where your unit is facing. It's a wider focal length. If you're shooting on a lens like this 35 millimeter here and you're zoomed in quite a bit. You don't really know where you are. You don't know where you're positioned. Being able to go into the FPV mode and see your shot and see the direction that the unit is facing to see more of your surroundings because this is a much wider field of view. It even locks to the horizon of wherever your drone is facing. It doesn't stay centered like a gimbal. It actually goes with the motion of your drone so you can see how much of an angle your horizon level is at. It's really nice and really useful. I tend to use it quite a bit when I'm flying with the Inspire 2. The sixth reason you should consider getting this drone is something that you probably are already aware of, but I'll just go out and say it. This thing can record raw DNG and ProRes with a fee of roughly $1,400 for both, not to mention the expensive SSDs, the proprietary SSDs that go in here on the back. But once you get all those things, you're shooting seriously like motion picture quality, science. The seventh thing to know about this drone is that if you're not gonna invest the money or you're going to upgrade to the ProRes or RAW function in the future, you can use the micro SD port here and you can get a nice H.265 
recording or an H.264 recording if you're not able to read H.265. But it's the seventh thing to know about this drone is that if you are not wanting to spend the money for the SSD or the raw ProRes recording option, or if you're just going to web and you don't need all that crazy file space and the ridiculous raw data, you can record to the micro SD card slot here on the side. It just takes a normal Extreme Pro SD card and it records just like the Phantom 4 Pro or the Mavic. The only difference is you're using a camera that is superior to both of those drones with the X7 or even the X5S. The sensors are much larger, it's much better in low light. You also have all these amazing lenses that you can put on here. So if you're just going to web or you don't need all that data, the micro SD card slot on the side is more than sufficient and the footage looks great. The eighth thing to know about this drone that you may not know is that it has a full-sized USB-A port right here for firmware updates and software uh, fixes and whatnot, which is really usable because it's the exact same cable that you use to plug into the controller while you're flying the drone and you plug it into your phone, that works for Android or iOS. Obviously we are going into a USB-C world these days, but it is nice to only have to carry around one cable with you, one to go into your phone, and then to do the software update, this just plugs into your iPad or phone, and then you can plug it straight into the unit, just like so. You don't have to carry on that goofy USB micro thing that converts to lightning. You know what I'm talking about? The Phantom came with that, the Mavic comes with that. It's a little dongle they have to carry around with you. I don't think you're gonna be spending $3,000 on a drone just because of this one feature, but it is nice that it is there. And number nine, this thing is fast as crap. In the standard mode, you can go up to 30 miles per hour. And in the sport mode, you can go almost up to 70 miles per hour. That is ridiculously fast. And it's good to know because you're probably gonna be using this for car following shots. Maybe you're doing a car commercial, you're following a train, you're following an airplane. No, don't follow an airplane. The FAA doesn't like that. <laughs> uh, but going into the sport mode does disable the obstacle avoidance feature. So be very safe and make sure that you're in a place that doesn't have anything around you because you're gonna be going really fast and there's no obstacle avoidance in that mode. But 70 miles an hour, good grief. And the 10th thing to know about this drone is that because the camera is so good, because the motion tracking is so good, you can actually use this thing as a gimbal. Now it's not going to replace a Ronin 2 with a camera that has good autofocus or if you're using a wireless follow focus and you've got somebody doing that and you're doing a full gimbal Steadicam shot, it's not gonna replace that. But what's really neat about this is doing a shot like way up high, big aerial shot coming down to the ground, having somebody catch the drone and move in on the subject, using it in a run and gun scenario, getting just gimbal shots handheld, especially if you have an assistant who is either operating the camera from the remote or holding the unit and walking forward. It's just really nice and we've actually done this in our official Inspire 2 review. Connor held the drone while I controlled the gimbal and the focus and it actually was really good because this camera looks like a camera that I would use professionally on the ground. It's Super 35 with an f2.8 lens that is really sharp and really nice. Because the image quality is so good, because the gimbal is so stabilized, you can actually get away with it and it's really seamless and really nice to use as a gimbal because your aerial shots and your ground shots are gonna match perfectly. Again, it's not gonna replace a actual gimbal with a camera that is purpose built for that reason. The autofocus is not good on this camera, but in a pinch, you can use this on the ground as a gimbal and it looks really nice. So who needs a drone? Well, probably you. If you watch this video all the way through, you might be considering either an Inspire or a Phantom or something. And honestly, this drone is very expensive. Just the unit by itself with no cameras costs roughly $3,000. To get the base kit with the X5S, you're looking at $6,500. If you wanna get the top of the line X7 gimbal, just the gimbal and the camera alone are $2,500. The lenses are $1,100 each. The SSDs start at like $400 and go up to almost $1,000. The license to get the DNG and the ProRes recording is 
about $1,200 to get that license. The batteries are like $400 each. If you have another operator, another controller is gonna cost you about $400. When it's all said and done, you're spending like ten dollars to $15,000 depending on what your kit is. If you wanna go bare minimum and you're just doing this by yourself, you wanna get some aerial work out there, you wanna up your game, get that base model, get the X5S, you're looking to spend about six to $7,000 on a usable kit or Honestly, think about the Inspire 1. The Inspire 1 is a lot cheaper than it used to be, and you can get the X5 on that thing, and it looks pretty good. It's not gonna be as nice as the X5S, but you can get some good image quality out of that as well. Depending on your budget and depending on what you actually create, this may or may not be the right drone for you. If you're a vlogger or somebody that's putting out a lot of content, maybe a Mavic or Phantom makes more sense. It's definitely a lot cheaper and it puts out a very good image quality. If you're shooting high production value, music videos, documentaries, films, or even if you just take your YouTube seriously, this drone may be the right one for you. I know for me, I really like it and I'm happy to have it and I'm happy to use it. And it's really not that much of a hindrance compared to a Phantom. Let us know what you think. Do you want this drone? Do you have any questions about this thing? We're gonna have it for a long time, so if you have any questions at all, please put it in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe. We have lots of videos coming in the future. Once again, I'm Dave Altizer. This is Kinotika. We'll see you guys next time.